नमस्कार एवरीवन टुडे वी विल अगेन डिस्कस कास्टिग्लियानोस थ्योरम्स एंड टुडे वी विल सी हाउ कास्टिग्लियानोस थ्योरम्स कैन बी यूज्ड टू सॉल्व इनडिटरमिनेट सिस्टम्स लेट अस रिकॉल द कास्टिग्लियानोस थ्योरम्स कास्टिग्लियानोस फर्स्ट थ्योरम स्टेट्स दैट फोर्स pk at location k is equal to curly u by curly triangle k where u is strain energy of the system and triangle k is the deflection of the system at location k so first theorem can be used to find out the force at the kth location and the castiglianos second theorem states that deflection at kth location is given by curly u by curly pk where capital u is the strain energy of the system and pk is the force that is acting at kth location in the direction of triangle k now the deformation can be uh, angular deformation also so if it is the angular deformation then we have the expression theta j equal to curly u by curly mj where capital u is the strain energy and mj is the moment that is acting at the jth location here it is worth appreciating that we are talking about linearly elastic materials where complementary strain energy u star is equal to elastic strain energy capital u now let us see how castiglianos theorems can be used to solve statically indeterminate systems <clears throat> so we have on our screen a statically indeterminate system and we can see that this system is experiencing <coughs> forces capital p1 capital p2 pn pk and moments m1 mj and it is also experiencing reactions and here we can see that x1 x2 xp xj they are the redundant reactions <coughs> now to use castiglianos theorem to solve such statically indeterminate systems we express the strain energy as uh, a function of capital p1 capital p2 capital p3 up to capital pn and also as function of capital x1 x2 up to xj and xp as in equation 1250 1251 next <coughs> we differentiate expression 1251 and get expression in as in equation 1252 uh, by equating curly u by curly xj equal to 
where j goes from 1 to p and xj are the reactions. Here it is worth noting that curly u by curly xj has been equated to 0 because the, the deflections at the location of the reactions is 0. So this way <clears throat> we will get p equations which are equal to the degree of statical indeterminacy of the system. And by solving these equations simultaneously, the magnitudes of the redundance can be obtained. So let us try to see, uh, understand this using one example. Example 1214. <coughs> using Castigliano's second theorem, verify the bar forces found in example 214 caused by applied force P. The planar system of three elastic bars is repeated in figure 1223A. The cross-sectional area A of each bar is the same and the elastic modulus is E. So let us look at figure 1223A. So here we have figure 1223A. In this figure, we can see that we have three links AC, BC, and CD. Angle between link AC and BC is alpha, and the angle between the link BC and CD is again alpha. At point C, there is a vertical force, capital P, which is acting uh, in the vertical direction. We want to now find out how much would be the forces which would get developed in the three links. For solving this problem, we first of all <coughs> apply a force, which is the reaction at location B in the vertical direction. So we get now figure twelve twenty three B. Now here you can see link BC is experiencing a reaction capital S X. From our understanding of statics, we can easily see that the force or the reaction at point D would be P minus X divided by two cos alpha. And similarly, there would be a reaction of P minus X divided by two cos alpha at location A. Now we will <coughs> see how we can use the Castigliano's theorem. We will express uh, strain energy of this system as capital U equal to X square L by two AE plus two, that could start P minus X whole square into L divided by two into four AE cos cube alpha bracket close. Now we will differentiate this, uh, this expression of strain energy with respect to capital X and equate it equal to zero because there is there cannot be any deflection at location of uh, at the location where capital X is acting. So we have curly U by curly X equal to capital XL by AE into one plus bracket start P minus X bracket close capital L divided by two AE cos cube alpha into minus one and that should be equal to zero. So this gives us X equal to P divided by one plus two cos cube alpha. So <clears throat> we can see that how easily using Castigliano's theorem, we have uh, found out reaction X at capital at point B. So this system was statically indeterminate, but usage of Castigliano's theorem has allowed us to find out forces in all the links. Once capital X is known, then we can find out forces in the other two links, which will be P minus X divided by two cos alpha. Let us look at another example. Example 1215. 
consider an elastic uniformly loaded beam clamped at one end and simply supported at the other as represented in figure 1220 determine the reaction at a so we have to find out reaction at a let us look at figure 1220 <clears throat> Yes, here we have a uh, beam in which there is a reaction Ra at the one end and fixed at another end. We want to find out how much would be the reaction at Ra. And this beam is experiencing a uniformly distributed load, capital W0. Now let us see how Castigliano's theorem can help us in solving this indeterminate system, statically indeterminate system. Now here we will treat Ra as the unknown and we will use this expression triangle A equal to curly U by curly Ra equal to zero because there cannot be any uh, deflection at location A. So we have curly U by curly Ra equal to zero and now to find out the expression of curly u by curly ra we will have to find out first of all the expression of capital m which in this case would be minus w naught x square by 2 plus ra x and if we derivate it with respect to ra we get curly m by curly ra equal to x and then we simply substitute it in the expression of strain energy and differentiate it with respect to ra then we get Triangle A equal to curly U by curly R A equal to 1 by EI integral from 0 to L bracket start minus P naught X square by 2 plus R A X bracket close X DX and that becomes minus W naught L4 by 8 EI plus R A L cube by 3 EI and that is equal to 0. And from here R A comes out to be 3 W naught L divided by 8. Let us look at the next example. <clears throat> Consider an elastic beam fixed at both ends and subjected to a uniformly increasing load to one end as shown in figure 1224. Determine the reactions at end A using equation 1252, EI for the beam is constant. So, this is the problem we have to solve this beam is fixed at both the <coughs> both the ends and it is experiencing a uniformly increasing load which is zero at end a and increases and uh, uniformly increases up to point b and at any location x from left end of the beam the load can be written as kx and left end is experiencing reaction ra and moment ma and similarly right end is experiencing reaction rb and moment mb 
to solve this problem, again, this problem is statically indeterminate to second degree. To solve this problem again, let us find the expression of bending moment, which would be equal to uh, ma plus rax minus kx cubed by six. This is the bending moment at any location x from left end, differentiated with respect to ma. So that gives us curly m by curly m, ma equal to one and curly m by curly ra equal to x. <clears throat> and now we have the now we will use the Castiglianos theorem according to which triangle A or the deflection at point A equal to curly U by curly RA must be equal to zero. Now in this substituting the expression of strain energy we have integral uh, curly U by curly RA equal to zero to L uh, integration of M by EI curly M by curly RA into DX and that is equal to 1 by EI integration from 0 to L bracket start MA plus RAX minus KX cubed by 6 bracket close X DX. And similarly, we can find out expression of theta A, which would be equal to curly U by curly MA and that should be equal to 0. And <clears throat> uh, the expression of curly U by curly MA becomes integral from 0 to L m by ei curly m by curly ma dx and that becomes 1 by ei integration 0 to l bracket start ma plus rax minus kx cube by 6 bracket close dx equal to 0. And from here uh, we can find out the expressions of ma and ra by solving these two equations and we get ra equal to 3 kl square by 20 and ma equal to minus kl cube by 30. Now let us look at this example, which says rework example 1214 using Castiglianos first theorem. So we have to see figure 1225. So here we have figure 1225. Again, again, we want to find out how much would be reactions in the different links of this uh, system in which there are three links, AC, BC, and CD. Angle between link AC and BC is alpha and also the angle between link BC and CD is alpha. And this system is experiencing a vertical force of capital P at point C, at joint C. Now, <clears throat> what we will do is we will subject point C to a deflection of triangle one. This uh, deflection of triangle one would uh, manifest itself as triangle two in link AC and as also as triangle two in link DC. Now from our, uh, this figure,
we can see that triangle two can be written as equal to triangle one cos alpha. Again, we will now write expression of strain energy. And for this case, there are three links and we can write the expression of strain energy as capital U equal to summation of K equal to one to three, AK EK triangle K square divided by two LK where AK is area of cross-section of kth link, EK is Young's modulus of elasticity of kth link, triangle K is actual deflection of kth link, and LK is the length of the kth link. And uh, thereafter, uh, let us differentiate uh, this expression of strain energy with respect to triangle one. So if we do that, we have curly U by curly triangle one equal to AE by L triangle one plus two AE by L cos cube alpha triangle one equal to P. And we get triangle one equal to PL divided by AE one plus two cos cube alpha. And <clears throat> uh, the reaction uh, force in the vertical bar can be written as now capital X equal to K triangle one, and that is EA by L triangle one equal to P by one plus two cos cube alpha, where K is the stiffness of the link, which is AE by L. Now this result is in agreement with the, that found in example 12, uh, 14. Now, <clears throat> Let us try to find out uh, uh, elastic energy for buckling loads and try to see this, uh, it from the uh, angle of stability. Uh, so here we will uh, define one uh, function pi, which is called the total potential of the system. And this total potential of the system is expressed as in equation 1255 as pi equal to u plus omega, where u is strain energy of the system and omega is the potential energy of the external forces that act on the system. Now change in pi or triangle pi can be written as using Taylor's expansion as delta pi plus one by factorial two delta square pi plus one by factorial three delta q pi and so on. And uh, here we can see that for any type of equilibrium, delta pi has to be uh, equal to zero. And <coughs> And this uh, equilibrium concept can be uh, represented for uh, as in figure 1226. Here you can see there are three types of equilibriums. One is stable equilibrium, another is uh, unstable and then neutral equilibrium. For all types of equilibriums, you can see delta pi is equal to zero, right? And for, now uh, this one is a stable, uh, stable equilibrium. This is unstable equilibrium. And we can see now that For stable equilibrium, second derivative of this total potential should be greater than zero. And that's, uh, or in other words, delta square pi has to be greater than zero for stable equilibrium. Delta square pi is less than equal to zero for unstable equilibrium. And delta square pi is equal to zero for neutral, neutral equilibrium, uh, equilibrium uh, associated with the critical load. <coughs> 